Hi, my name is Dave Fimmick and I'm a senior trainer here at Cardinal Path. Today I'll be showing you a few lessons that are part of the Google Analytics 101 online refresher course. This course is geared towards users new to Google Analytics, new to analytics in general, or those of us who are just looking for a recap of its use and update regarding the ever-changing environment that is Google Analytics. This is the agenda for a two and a half hour course. The first lesson is translating business objectives to data and then back again. This is a very common request and an integral first step for anyone in understanding and leveraging analytics. You'll be shown how to create a blueprint that draws a clear line from your business objectives to your site's metrics. We will then cover the technical basics of how Google Analytics operates as a whole, how data is transmitted and received between your users, your website, and Google Analytics. In this video, as well as in the full course, we will dissect the amount, the account structure of Google Analytics. This is great fundamental knowledge that will be necessary for establishing some trustworthy data. During the full presentation, we'll take a good hard look at the user interface in Google Analytics. We'll explore every needed nook and cranny that will best help you leverage this tool. In this video, I will talk to the presentation portion of this lesson, which will cover commonly confused dimensions and metrics, as well as exactly what dimensions and metrics are. The bulk of the course will be spent on each of these reporting sections audience, acquisitions, behavior, and conversion reports. You will learn to use them, why to use them, and what you sh it should mean to you, as well as some case studies from the individual presenters. We'll conclude with a big scary exam that really isn't so big and scary, as well as wrap up and Q&A session. During every section of this course, all attendees are highly encouraged to ask questions. Each course is tailored to the attendees based off of the questions, and we love answering your questions. So the first topic we'll be covering in this video is an account structure. Like I said in the agenda, this is some very foundational knowledge, very necessary for setting up a trustworthy data. So how this all fits together? Everything represented here in blue is Google, the entire Google environment. Now within the Google environment, you have various applications from Gmail to the App Store to Google Play to Google Tag Manager, a whole bunch. And within that, Google environment, you have Google Analytics. It's just another app that's floating around the Google universe. Now, as a user, you have access to the Google environment. Say you sign up for a G Plus page, then Google Analytics is aware of your email and your account, and that's your user account. Now, your user account gets assigned various different GA accounts. These accounts may be something like my company website, my personal blog, and my freelance website. Each one of these accounts are generally organizations. Uh, depending on the size of your organization, generally you're only going to have one, um, but if you have a very large organization, you may have multiple different accounts. Each one of the accounts simply buckets um, it, information within it, that information being the web properties. Now, each one of these web properties is generally a web asset or a website, um, but fundamentally they are data sets. So for example, we have a corporate site and an online store for my company website. Now these two data sets are different and they are not natively comparable in the interface itself. They are kept separate. The blog, for example, may uh, include multiple different websites, multiple different uh, subdomains, and it may be all rolled up. It really depends on how you want to look at it. Now data flows into Google Analytics at the web property level. Every web property is given a unique identifying number. And after the data flows into the web property, it's made available to the views. Views used to be called profiles, but views are essentially just different perspectives or different arrangements of the data set it's attached to. So for example, the corporate site here has a main view, a PPC only view, and a USA view. So with USA, it's isolated to the geographic region of the United States. For PPC, it's only bringing in PPC traffic. These views are made possible with view filters, and each one of these steps have various different settings. You are allowed to have 50 different views per account. Once you log in to Google Analytics, you will see the interface here. Each one of these dark black folders here, such as Dave's Pet Dinosaurs, Ellen's Bike Shop, and Joe's Pizza Place represent accounts. These are just those organizational buckets. Now Joe's Pizza Place here has three different web properties or data sets. So we have the downtown store, we have the main site, and we have the pizza truck. 
And then within those, we have a different view for each, which is just all website data, which is the default view. The focus of this module is to understand the user interface and key dimensions and metrics. In this video, we will not be diving into the interface, but we will be covering some very key dimensions and metrics that are commonly confused, as well as what, what dimensions and metrics are. Now, there is a whole wealth of dimensions and metrics. There are hundreds of them to look at. Uh, we will not be covering every single dimension and metric in any of our courses, uh, simply because there is a wealth of documentation behind each one of these. The best way to think of this is that dimensions are rows and the very first and leftmost column in any report, and metrics are the remaining columns. If you ever get lost in the interface, there is always a little question mark in the columns that will describe exactly what the dimension or metric you are looking in and give you a really great definition for that. But there are going to be a few dimensions and metrics we're going to talk about here. Source and medium are some of the most important dimensions to ensure you have a solid understanding of, especially if you fall into the marketing realm. There are actually three dimensions associated with source and medium. They have individual dimensions, one for each, a source, a medium. And then there's also the source medium aggregated dimension that is simply the combination of the two individual. This is done because the dimensions are commonly paired together during analysis and it frees up the secondary dimension, which we'll get to in later classes for deeper analysis. So let's break down what each one of these are. Source answers, where did the traffic originate from? Medium answers, what avenue did the traffic take from the source to arrive on my website? So for example, let's say we have example.com. This fills the source dimension. Then we have the destination, which is our website. This will fulfill a few dimensions, such as landing page, host name, and that sort of thing. But for this example, let's just show page. Now, how traffic flows from the source to the page is the medium. Mediums from the source may be referral, if there's a link on example.com, or social, if example.com is a social network, or CPC, if we paid for an ad on the website. All of these avenues are from the same source. In our reports, we can look at this in a few different ways and build reports that are centered around any of these dimensions. What's important to you? Is it the page they landed on? The medium they came through? Where they came from? Probably all of it. Next, we'll talk about bounces versus exits. So every exit, I'm sorry, every bounce is an exit, but not every exit is a bounce. Let's take, for example, we have three different sessions, and within each one of those sessions, we have different pages or page views. Now, when we look at bounce rates or we look at exit rates, we want to look at it on a page-by-page -page basis. So in this example, we have page A. Now, the criteria for something to be a bounce is somebody visits the website, lands on a particular page, that's an entrance does not have any interaction, and then leaves the website. That's both an exit and a bounce. So for example, we have page A has three different page views across three different sessions, has three different entrances, and a bounce rate of 33%, because they bounced out in session three. That also means that they have an exit rate of 33%. Now page B has no entrances but two page views. Therefore, it can't have a bounce rate because it always had an interaction because it is not the entrance page. It has an exit rate of 50% because there are only two page views and on one of those page views, they left. And finally, we have page C. One page view on session one, no entrances, therefore no, no bounce rate, and an exit rate of 100%. Now, I'm sure anyone looking at this video has gotten this question before. What's the website's bounce rate? Well, that question is pretty irrelevant. You want to look at bounce rates on individual page-by-page -page basis, including page-by-page -page basis for exit rates. Now, how about time-based metrics? How are time-based metrics measured? Time is measured between communications from the user to the Google Analytics service. Let's take, for example, a pretty standard session. Somebody lands on page A, navigates to page B, navigates to page C, and then leaves the website. 
Now, where is this time measured? It is between the calls between the various pages. So, for example, if I wanted to calculate the average time on page for page A, and they spent 30 seconds on page A, it would be measured from the transition from page A to page B. So the time between those calls was 30 seconds. Therefore, they spent 30 seconds on page A. Now let's say they spent 10 seconds on page B, and then five minutes on page C. But the problem with page C is there is no second call to measure that against. So page C has nothing to bounce it off of. Therefore, we can't actually measure the exit page. So when we look at the average time on page for the entire page A, page B, and page C, all three of them, it's going to be 13 seconds because page C is going to show zero time on page. This is important to note because the exit page is pretty important. What did they do there? What made them leave? Why did they leave? For example, if I'm writing an article about jogging and I put it on page C, and somebody was so motivated by my article to jog, they jumped out of their chair and ran down the block, and their session timed out, well, that would be an exit, and that would be zero time on page, despite the fact that page C was my most successful page. If we did the actual math, it would mean that they have spent one minute and 53 seconds. This is if we included that five minutes. This is pretty different from the actual number we're getting. Now, time-based metrics are still good to look at, but do take into account that they never count the last page. Finally, we have the hierarchy of GA. We have a user who comes in. Those users have various different sessions. A single user can have multiple different sessions. For example, you visit a site more than once, that's you being a returning user and having different sessions. Now, within those sessions, the user is going to bounce around to different pages, and those are called page views. Now, within those page views, the most granular tracking is various interactions. You can do uh, social interactions. You can do event interactions. You do virtual page views. There's a lot of items that you can measure as in-page in, uh, interactions. Now, each one of these steps in the hierarchy can have different dimensions and metrics associated with it. Finally, just some quick tips. A bounce is any entrance to the website without an interaction. Time is not relevant. Uh, this is commonly misconstrued. A lot of folks feel that uh, if they leave after spending X amount of time, they don't be, they're not considered a bounce. This is not true. Uh, it is measured between interactions. Time-based me me uh, metrics are measured between calls to the GA servers. Dimensions describe data and metrics measure data. Dimensions are measured by metrics. So thank you for watching this video. There is a link here in this video. Uh, to visit the um, registration page for this particular course if you're interested in taking that or any other. Uh, be sure to reach out and uh, sign up, and I look forward to seeing everybody in class.